G'day folks, Jeff here with a list of my all-time favourite Top 20 Aussie Metal Demos. We'll go back to the third list of my favourite Aussie Metal releases, this time looking at demos. As a young headbanger, I always loved discovering new bands. Half the time I couldn't afford a full-length record, so I managed to acquire a good number of Aussie demos over the years, as you can see. <laughs> Demos are generally the early days of a band and can capture that initial spark and youthful enthusiasm that makes bands special. They can be more experimental than full length albums too, which I really appreciate. As I grew up in Canberra, this list does feature some obscure local bands that you probably haven't heard of, but there's also some big names of the Aussie scene in here. This list is demos that were very personal to me, mostly in my formative years as a metalhead, so they're mostly ancient. There are plenty of other classic Aussie demos such as Slaughter Lord, Crypt, Archeron, Dark Lord and Addictive. They didn't make the list, mainly as I didn't hear them until later. Some of these bands didn't make it past the demo stage, so not everything on this list is able to be bought unless you get really lucky. <laughs> so, for a few, I only have YouTube links to share. As with my previous list, it's not really in order other than maybe the top five or so. Anyway, let's get into it. Enjoy! Number 20 is Paradox by Cruciform. Cruciform are a death doom band from Sydney who were pretty active in the early 90s. They put out the album Atavism in 93 and then this demo in 95 and then, at the peak of their awesomeness, bloody split up for 17 years. They'd even made the big time back then with a Cruciform shirt featured on TV soap opera Home and Away. <laughs> the album was good but the two tracks of epic death doom on this demo have always grabbed me more. I hate to use the word mature here, as it's a bit wanky, but it's quite fitting as these two songs are more complex and dynamic than their early works, and showcase a band really finding their sound. First song Paradox meanders along nicely with a tasteful solo and eventually kicks into a real headbanger of a riff, and second song Gutter starts with a heavy slow riff that sounds like early anathema, and then kicks in with a scream and it's just killer riff after killer riff, until a nice dirgy keyboard solo. They use keyboards really well on this, and they don't overpower the music. Simon's vocals are great on this, and I think his vocal range from coarse screams to deep growls really adds a lot of feeling and power. For a demo, this sounds pretty good, although the drums are a bit average, and I really wish they recorded these tracks for a second album with better sound. I saw them live a number of times before they split, and I remember they had a few newer songs, including one called Black River, I think, that were absolutely the killer, so it's a shame they split before recording them. I really wish there was live footage from back then, but I've never managed to track any down. I'm glad they're back together though, and I look forward to new music from them. Dark Symphonies reissued the album and the demo recently, so check out the link below for both CD and vinyl. Number 19 is Spiral by Sadistic Execution. I wasn't going to pick this demo as these two songs are on the We Are Death Fuck You album, which was in my top 20 albums video, but I did own this well before the album came out, and it was one of my early tastes of just how berserk Aussie metal could be. With this demo, they increase the intensity and insanity, which was only really hinted at on tracks like Lupercalia off their first album, The Magus, and I didn't hear The Magus until I was well acquainted with We Are Death and Chaos, so this is what I think of as Sad X's sound. This was the first release with Chris Hayes, and he nicely injects his distinct solo style into both tracks, mostly in short, sharp bursts. There are even some keyboards on Ipsissimus, which is my favourite song here. Some killer twisted guitar lines, much in the vein of Possessed or Early Morbid Angel. <laughs> I love the instructions on here. To play at the volume of 1000 Armageddon's or die! <laughs> <laughs> These are listed as tracks from their forthcoming album Spiritual Dynamics, which I remember seeing ads for in zines. Well, they never materialised. Sadex were always masters of self-promotion, and I remember the amusing battle of words with Cradle of Filth in the Terrorizer magazine, as well as their persistent stickering of Sydney. I had plenty of metal stickers on my first car, and the only one that survived, the harsh Aussie sun, was Sadex. <laughs> Those stickers were nearly as sturdy as the modern invasion stickers that coat a heap of my collection. <laughs> Number 18 is Garbage Guts with Digest Me to Excrement. <laughs> a 
Cabbage Guts are a killer gore grind band from Melbourne with members of Captain Cleanoff, Roscoff and Vaginal Carnage. Around for a couple of years in the mid-2000s. Originally they were called Urinary Tract Infection. <laughs> it's not really the catchiest name, so I'm glad they shifted to Garbage Guts. Honestly, there's nothing really original or revolutionary about this, but it's just a great bloody demo, which I've listened to many, many times. It's a great mix of catchy riffs, blast galore, and some great quality gurgled vocals. Oliver Owen's riffing style, which is great here, and in his main band, Captain Cleanoff. Sound is pretty bloody average, really, but I think it kind of adds to the charm, and I do like the loud drums. I saw them play on a ferry in Sydney Harbour once with Fuck Up Dead, which was great fun and quite surreal. Ferry is essentially a floating bar, so when packed full of metalheads, usually results in hijinks. <laughs> and I remember one rather large unit getting a bit too rowdy and punching the ceiling and having to cool down in the hold. There's long been talk of an unfinished Garbage Guts album, but I'm not holding my breath about it ever being released. Or I found one song from it on their Bandcamp, which is listed below. Demo was originally just a CDR, but it was released on tape by Cadaveric Dissolution, so check out the link below to snag one. <laughs> Number 17 is Weeping by Mournful Congregation. This is mournful back in the early days of Funeral Doom sounding. A bit more like a slowed down Forest of Equilibrium, Funeral's Triste demo, and the Thurgathon demo that I'm not even going to try and pronounce the title of. There's less lead guitar melodies and more straight out bleakness here, and even a bit of double bass speed on Suffer the Storms, which is damn effective. This demo has a different vocalist before Damon took over. He has a great, powerful voice, although I think it's more suited to his death metal band Lord of the Command, really. Uh, the first song has some of the gloomiest lyrics I've read, with the subject of the song considering suicide, and the bleakest line being, As the darkness fades and I see the first rays of light, another day of misery is all that's ahead of me. <laughs> Cheer up, lads. <laughs> this is not really a patch on their latter albums. Well, it's interesting to see where they started. This is great in its own right. The demo was compiled with their second demo and first album on the Dawning of Mournful Hymn CD, and it's also been re-released on tape and vinyl. So some of those may still be around, so check it out. <laughs> Number 16 is Demo 97 by Earth. Earth are a death metal band from Melbourne who, let's just say, drank very deeply from the well of Swedish death metal. But hey, certainly fine by me as it's one of my favourite styles and they do it very well. They also use keyboards quite a bit, but I like that it's usually complimentary like old 90s death metal. is isn't too over the top. First album, Star Condemned, is probably my favourite as the sound is much better, but this demo was my first exposure. It contains their absolutely killer song of this spell which builds to one of the best song climaxes around. Damn, this song used to rule live. And it was so good they re-recorded it for both their first and second albums. Singer Brandon was briefly in the Everline ever-changing lineup of Damaged and played with them at Metal for the Brain Festival once. I remember him doing a really good job. I actually only got around to buying their third album recently off drummer Rob, so I'll give it a listen soon. <laughs> Number 15 is Demo 2000 by Misery's Omen. The flyer that comes with this demo states that it is, quote, abysmal progressive black metal, which I think is a pretty apt description for a rather strange band. It's on quite a different journey to most. To me, this sounds like a mixture of Vedburn's End and Flurity, but with doomier flavour. First song, Desolate Winds of Mars, starts off furiously, but changes to some nice melodic guitar lines before adding some vocals, which are crazed, to say the least, much in the vein of the second and third Bethlehem albums and early Burzum. The deranged vocals are one of the highlights for me on this demo, and successfully managed to convey both despair and insanity. Vocals and guitars are provided by TT from Sacrifix and Ghastly, and our old mates Damon and Denny from Stargazer, Cauldron Black Ram, and a multitude of other bands provide bass and drums. And both are in fine form on this, with some really killer bass lines on Natalia's Abyss, and tasteful but explosive drums throughout. The high quality musicianship and superb sound on this really elevates it to another level. This demo was released on CD along with tracks from their To Worship Stone God 7 inch which looks to be out of print, but the digital link is below. The seven inch tracks are great too, and they very nearly made my top 20 EPs list. They released an album called Hope Dies, which never really quite grabbed me. 
because it's a bit all over the place. If you like avant-garde black metal, then check this out. Number 14 is Demo 94 by Nazul. This is one I picked up from the old Impact Records shop in Canberra, which was the source of a lot of my early metal purchases. As I was lazy and jobless until after uni, I liked the cheap $5 demos they stocked, so I could actually afford them. The atmosphere on this is intense, mostly due to the animalistic vocals from Dalibor, the thick impenetrable guitars, and the constant battery. This demo is somehow even more rabid than their Totem album, which came out a year later with a re-recorded version of Vermis Mysterious from this, which is not surprising as that's an awesome song. Turnum is probably my favourite song here with killer buzzing tremolo guitars and feral drumming. This was reissued at the end of their Black CDP 10 years ago and I somehow managed to miss it, but the Bandcamp link is below. Hopefully one day we'll get Black Seed in this demo on vinyl. Number 13 is Demo 2000 by The Kill. This is the first release by Melbourne grindcore maniacs The Kill. It sees them at their rawest. Of course this is hyper fast grind with very little respite, which is what's so great about them. The sound here is pretty bloody average really, and guitars could be a lot louder or better defined on this, as they just sound like buzzing half the time. This featured their original vocalist Neil from Undernism, and he has a very rabid style on this, probably best showcased by the totally over the top Oh my god. Sadly, I never saw the kill with Neil singing, which is a shame as he sounds nicely unhinged on this, and I know that he put on a wrestling style show sometimes with blood, light bulbs and barbed wire. I was due to go see them in Sydney at Hardcore Super Bowl in 2002, where this lineup played with Fuck I'm Dead, but I'd been run over by a car in late 2001 and I'm still recovering. Although, I have recently discovered a videotape of their set from this, and I'm about to send it off to King Bean in Melbourne to digitise, so keep your eyes peeled. This was compiled on the Hate Session CD, along with Soundtrack to Your Violence, so I definitely recommend tracking that down. The soundtrack was in my Top 20 EPs video too. Yeah. Number 12 is Prod by Christbait. This is a very different beast to their later sludgier style, with a much more death metal sound with growled vocals and fast drumming, though there's still an abundance of thumping riffs. There's also plenty of Godflesh influence going on here with noisy lead guitar parts, which is one of the reasons this demo has always appealed to me. Favourite song is probably the song Prod, as I've always loved the intro drumming bit and it also has a monster of a riff partway through. I never did see them live during this period, although I would get the feel for it when they played the grindier later songs Nailgun and Tug live. They changed pretty dramatically with the Yeast album which came out a year later and I think definitely for the better as there are a few faster sections here that really just don't work too well. Last song Liquid is heavy as hell but has a fast blasted section with lots of screaming which now sounds to me like Jawas or Ewoks from Star Wars which of course completely ruins the atmosphere. This demo does sound a bit like the Blood Duster demo, which is not surprising as both were recorded by Scott Harper at SAE. This demo is now available as part of this spiffy box set, Ooh, recently released by Goat Sound, which contains their demo, split EP, two albums, and some live and unreleased tracks. The link to the Bandcamp is below. <laughs> Number 11 is Deranged Hallucination by Exceed. Exceed were an ancient Canberra thrash band who only did two demos, however, they're one of the early bands I saw live regularly at the Civic Youth Cafe and the legendary Terrace Bar. And this demo brings back great memories of front row headbanging, thumping drums, endless stage dive, and days of post gig deafness and wonky neck. <laughs> Even though this demo is 30 years old, it's scary how many of the lyrics I can still remember. This is not really balls-to-the-wall fast thrash, but more mid-paced and reminds me of Sacred Reich and Coroner's slower moments. Some of it's a bit clunky, but it's not surprising as this is their first demo. After a good number of shows, Singanori left for Precursor and a ton of other bands over the years, and he now fronts a legendary Aussie Yobbo rock band, the VBs. Bassist John also left for Alchemist, which was a great career choice, really. 
Fortunately, the replacement vocal was not much chop, and I never bothered to get their second demo. Listening to it now, this music's okay, but uh, those vocals are pretty bad. <laughs> they must have split by 92, as I don't have any flyers of theirs in my archives from then on. Guitarist Tony went on to play in Warden with Joel from Arm and Angel, and also played with Kill for Satan for a while. Probably zero chance of finding an original of this, but thankfully some nice person put the whole thing up on YouTube, and the link is below. Plus, I've also linked a song from this gig in, from 1990 that shows just how big the Canberra scene was for a while, and also reminds me of how hard drummer John hit his kid. <sighs> Number 10 is Sinners by Gospel of the Horns. This is some of the finest black thrash this country's ever produced and rivals great bands such as Vormator, Nocturnal Graves and Destroyer 666. I mostly preferred Gospel Live compared to studio recordings, but this demo has the raw feel to their gigs which I love. What I always liked about Gospel was their catchiness and the first two songs on this are some of their best with the power of darkness having some awesome mid-paced sections, pretty damn slayerish riff, and of course the sing-along chorus, which was always a live favourite. Song Gospel of the Horns is another highlight, channeling Celtic Frost in parts, and I think it's their ability to play an updated version of mid-80s thrash without any modern compromises that works so well for them. The mid-paced bits are definitely my favourite, and the fast blasting bits of Desolation Descending are a bit lacking really. It definitely sounds like a demo, and is a bit thin sounding, but I prefer the punchy guitar sound they have here to later, better produced releases. Most of the songs on this were re-recorded for the either the Conquer EP, and one song on song, Call of Arms. But I think I prefer these versions, even though the drumming from Marcus is much better than Warhammer. This demo was re-released by Neil before the Master's Throne records, along with the Moments of Impurity 7-inch on CD and Fancy LP. Ooh. Or you could fork out for the spiffy 20 years of absolute power box set from Invictus Productions, which has nearly all of their releases. Number 9 is Sorting of the Insects by Misery. Brisbane death metal blokes Misery are back, and are one of the bands to make all three of my top 20 lists. This is their first demo from 92, and even this early on, it was clear that was something special with tough as hell, thick riffs and great growls. Sounds a bit average on this, really. And they certainly sounded much better on second demo, A Stern Diabolos. I could have also picked A Stern due to its awesomely gross cover art and because it has the incredible song Morbid Dreams, but the other two songs were on Unnecessary Evil. Plus, I didn't get the demo until many years later, whereas I bought this first one when it came out from Impact Records for five bucks. Most of these tracks were on the first album, but this was my introduction to the sheer power of songs like Body Farm and Born Dead, which have always been favourites of mine. The two non-album tracks here are Terror and Fornication, which are great, with Terror being a standout, although I can see why they didn't make the album, when they had presumably newer songs like Inverted Prophet and Social Cancer. This demo is available on the Evil Reborn compilation CD, which also features the other demo, first album, and some EPs, so definitely track that down. Number 8 is Little People Big Defects by Precursor. Precursor were an odd sort of band from Canberra. You started as a sort of proto-death thrash band, eventually morphed into a sort of alternative thrash band. With this demo, they recruited Wally from Prophets of Doom and Cactus Planet on vocals, and his clean vocals were quite a change from Ivan's gruff style. Fun fact, Wally and slug head honcho Ben Green went on to co-produce an album for Cool Keith. The band also featured Mags and Ivan from Pod People, with Mags' peculiar style already in full force and adding to the weirdness. And weird this certainly is, with strange churning riffs, a healthy dose of Voivod, strange lyrics and catchy thrash riffs that certainly got the crowd moving. Sadly this demo doesn't have their masterpiece song and live favourite cryptic self-mutilation on it, but it can't have everything. Not surprising that Precursor are one of the four bands on this list who appeared at the first Metal for the Brain festival, as I went to all the fests and they were a big influence on me. But these guys date back further than that for me, as they actually played Charnwood High, my charming Boonerfield High School back when they were called Necromancer. 
They were forced to state that their Slayer cover of Black Magic was against Satanism, which, <laughs> of course, a young thrasher like me knew was complete bollocks. I was in the cafeteria and there was an attempt at a mosh, which I got in and out of fast enough to not get detention. <laughs> uh, fun times. Embarrassingly, I don't actually own an original of this demo, but Bassist Adam was nice enough to re-release it on vinyl and digitally, so check out the links below for a taste of Canberra strangeness. <laughs> Number seven is Dissension of a Darker Deity by Corpse Molestation. Uh, this is the band that turned into Bestial War Last after a while, who didn't make my top 20 album list, as this was easily my favourite release of theirs. So there's a much more death metal sound than Vengeance War Till Death, though they aren't that different, other than the vocals and more feral sound. This is a classic thick sound from Double T Studios, which was also used by Disavowment, Chronomy, and Abramelin. But I think it's the slightly more musical touches on this that I prefer to Bestial, like the classy lead bit towards the end of Loathsomeness that emerges from a nice doomy section. This is still pretty barbaric stuff though, <laughs> and a lot more blasphemy influence than the Florida or Stockholm scenes. The demo ends with the odd contrast of a snippet of an old 1920s evangelical song, Get Happy, which kind of spoils the atmosphere for me, but I'm sure they got a laugh out of it at the time. I never did see Corpse Molestation live, but I saw Bestial Warlust at a medal for the Brain Festival in 95, and at the time I thought they were bloody dreadful. <laughs> Although I suspect my more experienced ears would appreciate them more now. Hopefully I got the chance again soon, as Bestial Warlust is scheduled to play a one-off reunion in Melbourne next March, and I got a ticket. Honestly, I'm just more, <laughs> more keen almost to see the crowd go off than actually see Bestial. Uh, there's a vinyl version that I've never managed to track down of this, but the good folks of Necroharmonic reissued this on CD along with the other Corpse Molestation tracks, so definitely try and track that down. Although if you can't, the digital link is below. <laughs> Number six is The All New Adventures of Slug by Slug. Here's another hidden gem from the early 90s camera scene. Slug were a sort of groovy, sludgy grind band who sang songs with hilarious lyrics about marijuana and, unsurprisingly, slugs. I'm quite certain Autopsy was an influence on this with a similar swagger and just general grossness of sound. Slug started as a one-man band of vocalist and guitarist Ben Green. I actually lived across the road from me and is partly responsible for luring me into this sordid world of heavy metal after he learned Ride the Lightning to Young Mulleted Me. Thanks, mate. Ben also did a lot of design work for his other band, Three, as well as a heap of distinctive gig flyers. I had the displeasure of listening to him teaching himself drums from across the skull sack, although I did have the pleasure of him bringing this demo over to play for me just after they recorded it at 2 uh, The first demo was charmingly bodgy, really, but it did have the live classic sluffer mole on it with its very skankable main riff. But this demo fleshed it out nicely, with excellent drumming from School of Music trained Steve and bass, and more importantly, disgusting vomited vocals from Mags from Pod People and Precursor. As you can hear, Mags went completely over the top on this, and on stage it was even more fun. Live, they were just one of the funnest bands I've ever seen, and all I can remember is circle moshes, amusing banter, and everyone grinning like idiots for the whole gig. For some reason, Versions of this demo came with a recording of them at the movies watching Army of Darkness and giggling. <laughs> Fair enough. Sadly, the band camp doesn't have a few of their other songs, such as the hilariously named Abominable Butt Tick, Hashbog, and of course Turd Muncher. But I'll put a link to a live sh recording below, which probably has at least one of those songs. Awesome, awesome band. <laughs> Number five is Menstrual Soup by Blood Duster. <laughs> Another band that made all three of my top 20 videos, and with good reason, as I bloody love these guys. This is the first release from Blood Duster, supposedly recorded a few months after they formed. This does sound a bit more death metal than Fisting the Dead, but it still contains that signature groove, especially on the song Dr. Artery, which is probably my favourite here. Plus it has the magical high and low vocal trade-offs that don't sound like carcass at all. I just read the lyrics for the first time in years and I'd forgotten how uh, immature they are. 
I'm more used to classier, newer songs like On the Hunt and Porn Store Stiffy. <laughs> I still remember when I first heard this as my good mate Andy played it for me at a party, mostly so we could laugh at the song Swine in Shit, which is 18 seconds of blasting, pig snorting, and lyrics insulting Christbait singer Jason V. Musingly, I bought this at the old Extreme Aggression store in Melbourne and was sold it by none other than bassist Jason PC, who worked there. <laughs> Explains why he seemed so pleased and gave me a discount. Uh, that was a fun trip to Melbourne with Alchemist, who played a few shows at the Sarah Sands Hotel. We got to see Christbait and Spiderbait the night before the GB, which was bloody awesome, and caught someone spying on our room through a peephole. <laughs> I never did see any of these songs live, although I hassled Jason enough to play them, and I did hope they might play something at their final show. But I don't think they did, although I was a bit tipsy at the time, so who knows. Uh, Czech label Bizarre Leprous re-released this on Picture Disc and Spiffy Shaped CD, which of course I own as a my tragic. <laughs> Bloody awesome. <laughs> Number four is Erectic Awakening by Necrotomy. Necrotomy were a short-lived death metal band from Melbourne, who were one of the heaviest singers to come out of this country. They had two demos and played a brutal grinding style of death metal, much in the vein of early Grave and Rotrevor. This is just classic death metal with plenty of spooky keyboard intros that work really well, deep guitars and Shilby's massive growl over the top. Plus, I really love the drumming and it's quite varied in the non-blasting sections. I probably should, like, first demo cranial dismemberment more as it's mostly the same songs with an even rustier sound but I'm not as big a fan of obviously pitch shifted vocals plus I had erectic since it came out but didn't hear cranial until later plus the cover art <laughs> pretty bloody average compared to the awesome erectic cover I was lucky enough to see Necrotomy twice when they played two nights in Canberra with Archeron and they really blew my young mind with a complete wall of noise I do remember having liked Archeron more at the time, but I wish I could go back now with the time machine, as my more mature appreciation for overblown sound, and also knowing these songs so well, would have been much better. After this demo, they recorded two songs with, for an EP, which never came out, but one track was on the Sounds of Ordinary Madness compilation. Music has never been reissued for some reason, but their band camp is all the songs, so definitely check that out. Necrotomy were also infamous in the Aussie underground scene for having appeared on TV on a talk show that did a feature on Big Bad Scary Death Metal. They played one song in this ridiculous metal cage thing with flames and scary imagery. Then there was a panel discussion with the crowd full of metalheads and a few professionals who tried to analyse death metal. <laughs> Hilarious stuff. And I've provided the link below and highly recommend you watch it. This demo really is one of the hidden gems of the early days of Aussie death metal. Check it out. Number three is Communion by Armored Angel. Choosing between the two classic Green Luck like Green demos was the most difficult part of this list as both are exceptional and some of the earliest Aussie metal I heard and loved. But in the end, Communion slowly edged out Wings of Death mostly because of the title track and improved sound, and it's a bit more vibrant and energetic. First song, Castration, is a prime example with their patented steamroller groove combined with some tasty, faster sections. Armored Angel were always a riffs galore sort of band, and there are no duds on this demo whatsoever. Title track Communion is a definite highlight with a killer riff running throughout. The last song was a live favourite too, as who doesn't like to yell, MY FIST YOUR FACE, at the top of their voice. Plus, the bridge after about half a minute is just heavy as hell on one of those automatic headbanging riffs. Plus, props to drummer Joel, who smashes it here and plays like a beast live, while also doing vocals. This demo sees them leaning even more towards death metal, although it's still thrash, with the odd slayerism appearing from time to time. I still have great memories of watching Lucy smash his bass into his head during the song Arm and Angel. Uh, uh, I was very glad to see Hell with his headbanger press this on vinyl, although I'm a bit peeved that they cut off the final grunt on My Fist Your Face. Both demos are available on the Hymns of Hate compilation, which I can't recommend highly enough. Pure class. Number two is Demo 91 by Alchemist. 
was tossing up between this pre-Jar of Kingdom demo and the pre-Lunar Sphere promo 94, but this shows Alchemist getting really comfortable with experimentation and was around the time I started seeing them live more regularly. Plus, all the promo 94 songs were re-recorded for Lunar Sphere and they sound better there. Alchemist still had a thrashy sound on this, although the death metal influences were creeping in. They were already getting weird and psychedelic on Demo 90, but they took it even further with Demo 91, as well as introducing the dramatic time shifts, which gives it a crazier feel, especially noticeable on the second song Escapism. It's a complete step up in both quality and sound, and more confident songwriting. I first heard this when the drummer Rod was at school with me and dragged me out to his car at lunch to play it for me. Of course I loved it, and he was happy that I said the vocals reminded him of Celtic Frost. I'm sure I would have said something nice about his drumming, which would have been very truthful as it's bloody stellar on this demo. Our uh, first song in Nancing Enigma was re-recorded for their Jar of Kingdom album with good reason. It's one of their best songs with a great mellow middle section that builds nicely to a powerful fast bit. I have great memories of just how apeshit the crowd used to go during this song with Circle Moshes galore. I do really miss seeing Alchemist live, but I'm glad I somehow retained memories of all the different eras of the band that I saw. I'm somewhat tempted to do a whole video dedicated to rambling just how great Alchemist were, as they really were a big influence on me, and I did see them probably a hundred times. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, only two songs are on the Embryonics compilation, which is still available, however the band did tack it on the end of their second version of Jar of Kingdom that's also probably pretty rare too, but definitely try and check it out. <laughs> Number one, Deep Sensory Procession into Oral Fate by Disembowelment. I decided not to list their Dusk EP as my favourite EP in the last video, as it's essentially this demo with the Extracted Nails, which I already had on the Pantalgia compilation, and only one new song. Believe me, it would have been number one on that list too, such as the depths of my fanboyism. <laughs> This is a huge step forward from their Morning September demo, which quite frankly sounded dreadful, as all you can hear is booming guitar and vocals and the drummer playing somewhere down the hall. First demo did have their trademark combination of fast blasting death metal mixed with crawling doom, but they really perfected it on this with the Tree of Life and Death being dynamically powerful and Beryl at Ornans mostly crawling at an oppressive pace. I fluctuate between liking the demo versions of these songs more than the album as they're rawer and faster, although when I hear the drums on that album, phew, it's a tough choice. I also love the intro outro bits on this demo, which were removed from Dusk for some reason. I remember first hearing this on a car ride home from a gig, as it had been on sale there as Renato was at the gig with his Napalm Death cover band, Scum. It was amazing of course, and I instantly regretted not forking out for the tape. I dubbed a copy Quick Smart, but it took until six years ago until I finally picked up an original on eBay for a reasonable price, and the seller turned out to be their guitarist, Jason. Uh, Relapse recently reissued both Dusk and Deep Sensory on vinyl, Ooh. although strangely they didn't include extracted nails on Dusk. Disembowelment are the greatest musical export this country has ever produced, and I never get sick of listening to them, number one by a mile. So, Thanks for watching, and I'd be very interested to see your top 20 demo lists in the comments below. Up next will be my first post-COVID gig review, and I'm also planning on doing some deep dives into my favourite bands, so please subscribe and keep your eye out for more videos. Cheers.